Mandy Nicholson belongs to the Wurundjeri Willem clan of Melbourne and Surrounds. She's an artist specialising in painting and has more recently worked on collaborative pieces and larger scale public artworks, including the Manchester and Melbourne Commonwealth Games opening and closing ceremonies. In 2011, Mandy gained a Bachelor of Arts Honours degree, specialising in Indigenous archaeology and geology. She's currently a project officer at the Victorian Aboriginal Corporation for Languages, and she'll be talking today about the role of Aboriginal women then and now. Please make her very welcome. Now, I'm quite short and I can't see anybody because of these bright lights, but I'm guessing there's people out there. Kaba Malamangil, Naranik Mandi, Wurundjeri Willamik, Woi Wurangik, Nyungodjin, Woman Yat, Big Duik, Nyungodjin, Limik Bullock, Nyungodjin, Kitapik, Nyungodjin, Bun Wurang Gulanya, Nyungodjin, Woi Wurang Gunyala, Gulanya. So what I just said was, greetings, my name is Mandy. My people are the Wurundjeri Willem people. My language is the Woi Wurrung. And I thanked my ancestors and I thanked my friends, which are you guys, for listening to me tonight, as um, we are on Boon Wurrung and Woi Wurrung country tonight. This is really surreal experience speaking into a bright light. So just bear with me. I've been quite sick um, during this week, so... Hopefully my voice will keep up tonight. I've been singing all day with um, a dance group called Jitty Jitty Dance Group. Um, so we, we danced in the rain, lovely today, and um, we've got quite a few bookings for the rest of the week. So I'm, I'm quite glad this um, sort of breaks up the, yeah, the different um, way of doing things is coming out and having a yarn with people. So this uh, beautiful artwork um, is very inspiring um, because... I have many roles as a woman, and I had to write them down because there's so many I had to put a few down, so I have to read them to you. And what's important to me, and in my many roles, so my many roles are, or Andrew woman, that has a lot underpinning that alone. Mother, mentor, daughter, auntie, sister, friend, artist, cultural language educator, archaeologist, housekeeper and taxi driver. I've got a big four-wheel drive. I've got seven seats in that four-wheel drive. When I ask my family to come and dance with me, I've never, ever got enough room in that car. I need to hire a double-decker bus to get my mob around. But that makes me full of pride because they're knocking at my door wanting to do cultural business. And the dance group is a women's dance group. So we focus on women's activities. So one of our dances that we did perform today was quite, um, was about the yam. So our name for yam is Wuleli. And we get the girls to dance and, and do the actions of digging for the Wuleli and bringing it back to their Willem, to their home, to their starving family feed them up, make them happy. And I quite like the fact that when they do the dance, I say, well, women are the majority of the providers of food, where, yeah, of course, a, a buramul or a maram, a kangaroo or an emu might hop past or run past. Sometimes it's very hard to catch these animals and feed the family. So women are the main providers, and I think that's still the case. Well, with me, anyway. <laughs> now, I'm probably not going to go by my notes. I might just talk, but I will, um, yeah, browse down at my notes as well. This painting to me, it, it brings out a lot of emotion in me because this beautiful lady painted this and you can imagine the surroundings she was in and you can imagine how she grew up. In urban environments, we're, we're brought up with love, we're brought up with schooling, we're brought up with employment. That... Half of that sounds pretty hollow to me, not the love part, not the family part, but the education and the job. It's very monotonous. And when you're an Aboriginal woman, especially in an urban environment, where does culture fit in there? It does fit in there, and it's a major part of my life. 
And I think language is culture. Um, I work with, um, at, yeah, at VACL, working with um, language revival in Victoria. And I think without language, there wouldn't be any ceremony. These days, uh, we are trying to bring ceremonies back that we have knowledge about. We're trying to bring those back with full honour of the way they used to be done. And I don't think it is such a difficult thing as such to bring these ceremonies back in an urban environment. You've got to have those staunch people that get out and say, well, we've got the evidence here of this was a ceremony. Let's get off our mums, our bottoms, get up and do these ceremonies. And over the last few years, I've been involved in so many things. This is only a little bit of what I've been involved in. But the role of women today has really, really changed, but it's, it's very similar as well as the past. I think the dynamic about these days with ceremony with women, it's a collaborative work between elders, and I don't know how to call myself, maybe the middle generation, and then you've got the kids, and then you've got the babies. So, to create these ceremonies again, we have to get all those people involved to make it fulfilling. And I think with language included in, into these ceremonies, singing, dancing, all of those things, it gives it more of a, I don't know, a Mother Earth feeling in your bones that you're doing the right thing by adding language. Because the pride that comes out of the children, the pride that I like, I can't sing at all. I'll never say I'm a singer. But I've noticed, when I'm sort of singing into the microphone especially, my voice just resonates and I'm thinking, as I'm singing, is that my voice? As soon as I stop singing and I've got these magical clapsticks and I swear they're magic, I'll sing my last note and then hit them and they will just echo. And I've never heard echoes last so long. We danced at this, um, uh, the Depi building today, and it's a, a massive um, foyer, probably two to three stories open. And I banged them clapsticks, and it just went, it just, I reckon it rocked the whole building. <laughs> but it sends, like, I, I've got goosebumps, it sends shivers down my body knowing that the old people are with me when I'm teaching these younger ones, and I've got the support of the elders to bring ceremonies back. And we've got, like I said, we danced today about the, the Murnong, the Wuleli, and we're trying to get community, um, our community, the Wurundjeri community, together to create more community ceremonies because, unfortunately, these days, in country, if you're out, like, you think of the state of Victoria, You've got Gippsland, beautiful bushland. You can go anywhere up there and maybe not see another person. Can you do that in Melbourne? Not really. We've got a couple of different um, sites that are allocated out, but we've got other sort of visitors. We've got cows and sheep and things like that. There's not really many places we can go that we can conduct our ceremonies in peace. Recently, last year, was the first gathering of Wurundjeri women since European arrival with probably about 25 of us dancing and doing a ceremony to honour William Barrack. We did a ceremony around a tree that was a possible birthing tree. And then as we were doing that ceremony, I'm getting shaky and goosebumpy again about it, that feeling that overcomes you when you're doing those ceremonies that nothing beats it, nothing beats it. And my brother Bill said, do you realise that's the largest gathering since European arrival of Wurundjeri women? I said, well, the youngest was two and the oldest was 70 odd. So being, uh, being able to be a part of that is awesome. And I don't think ceremonies today have any less importance than ceremonies in the past because we do our ceremonies today for the next generation. So eventually, the ceremonies that we are conducting today will be the old ways for the younger ones and the next generations. 
So I've always had strong women around me growing up. And it's not necessarily Indigenous women. My mother is the strongest woman in the entire world, universe, and just by one stare I knew I was in dead meat. <laughs> she was after me because I did something. I wasn't such a bad kid, not really, I was, I was all right. But mum, female strength, I'm hoping to give that strength that I've gained from my mum and my, and my aunties and give that to the next generation. And I think the planets align with, the, there is a reason why in my family 90% of us are women. I've got about, oh God, I couldn't even count, about 15, 16 nieces and four nephews. So we've got boys in our family to do the boys' business, men's business, and then we've got the women to do the women's business. So in terms of ceremony and paint up in this painting, unfortunately a lot of our ceremonies, of women's uh, in particular, they weren't recorded down. And as you all know, the history in Victoria and the rest of Australia and every Indigenous nation around the world, culture and language wasn't allowed to happen. So, and in terms of when people were recording this, middle-aged, middle-class white men, obviously they weren't allowed to come and, and watch women's ceremonies. So should I sit on my mum and go, oh, it's, language is gone, language is lost, culture is lost, I'll just go to work every day, come home, watch TV, go to sleep, get up, da 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 da, -da and in the meantime pull all my hair out because something's missing? No. I get up, we create new dances, new ceremonies with the essence and spirit of the old ways, and I can swear that the old people are watching over us and watching me and watching my community. And it just makes me so proud that getting language out there in these ceremonies, just with kids, school groups. I do hundreds of workshops with kids. And if they learn one word in Woiwurrung, then the job's done, the interest will come. Even make, you make learning fun. Last night, dead tired, my eyes are hanging out of my head tonight, just very busy on NADOC. I needed NADOC secretary. I said to the kids, because it, it's very hard to get all, because if you're in a big mob, which most Aboriginal people's families are, how do you get everyone together at the same time? So I thought, one, school holidays. Two, if there's any dance bookings or workshops. So last night, 10 o'clock at night, naughty, 10 o'clock at night, I said to the kids, get in here, get off your iPods and iPads and stuff. Come in here, we're going to have an activity. And they're like, oh, I want to go on here and whatever. I said, Psh, in there. So I said to them, all right, get a paper and pencil. And I'm going to describe to you in language, I'm not going to use any English, and you're going to draw what I'm saying. And they're like, eh, eh, eh. that's how they speak these days. <laughs> so long story short, I got them to draw these creatures. They may have had one big eye, three little mouths, a huge nose, one ear, ten legs. It's called alien cards. And the fun part of that is I would describe the picture I was seeing in front of me and they'd draw it. And we were in tears laughing and they were repeating back to me in language the body parts. And you can see them ticking over. I sort of had to stop when people started getting, you know, a bit tired and stuff like me. It's like, oh, they wanted one more. Can we do another one? Can we do another one? Can we do another one? So how is that from to, can we do another one? Can we do another one? Can we do, another one? Can we do it tonight? Tonight? Stuff like that really makes you motivated. Sometimes you're doing things on your own. Sometimes you feel a lot uh, very disheartened. But then if you let yourself get disheartened, the only problem is you. If you say to yourself, well, if people are bagging you out, doesn't that mean you're doing the right thing? Doesn't, you, doesn't that mean you're actually doing a good thing and you're making things move? So I gave up that negative vibe years ago. And I'm sharing as much as I can as a woman. Now, I'll probably have to look at my notes now. I pretty much said everything. I'm pretty good now. <laughs> Women multitask. <laughs> so I think 
just probably, um, I do have a statement at the end. I better read that because I'll go, damn, I didn't say that. As a Wurundjeri woman, I must leave a legacy. I must leave a legacy. Yinga balat, nyarga balat, dumba balat, nara jara naun, nanyano. Now that was sing strong, dance strong, talk strong, and everybody will heal. Now I've got this beautiful possum skin cloak over here. And one word to describe a possum skin cloak for me is ceremony. We use cloaks for birth, you wrap your babies up in this cloak. For death, you're buried with your cloak. For marriage, you, you wear the cloak. For anything ceremonial, it's like language. Without the cloak, the ceremony has no heart or soul. Nyungodjan, thank you.